we gather here for a, our Good Friday service. Life and death stand side by side as we enter into Good Friday. In John's Passion account, Jesus reveals the power and glory of God, even as he is put on trial and sentenced to death. Standing with the disciples at the foot of the cross, we pray for the whole world in an ancient prayer, as Christ's death offers life to all. We gather in solemn devotion, but always with the promise that the tree around which we assemble is indeed a tree of life. And we depart silently as we anticipate the culmination of the three days in the Easter vigil. Although we, may, we will not have an Easter vigil service, there are many Easter vigil services but that are now streamed online this year, and we may look for those. We begin our worship now with the prayer of the day. Almighty God, look with loving mercy on your family for whom our God, Jesus Christ, was willing to be betrayed, to be given over to the hands of sinners and to suffer on the death of the cross, who now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading comes from the book of Isaiah starting at the 52nd chapter, verse 13. The fourth servant home promises ultimate vindication for the servant who made his life an offering of sin. The servant pours himself out to death and is numbered with the transgressors, images that the early church saw as important keys for understanding the death of Jesus. Starting at the 13th verse, See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be exalted and lifted up, and shall be very high. Just as there were many who were astonished at him, so marred was his appearance beyond human semblance, and his form beyond that of mortals. So he shall startle many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths because of him. For that which had not been told to them they shall see, and that which they had not heard they shall contemplate. Who has believed what we have heard, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant, and like a root out of dry ground, he had no form or majesty that we should look at him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering and imputed with infirmity. As one from whom others hid their faces, he was despised, and we held him of no account. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases. Yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth like a lamb that is led to slaughter, like a sheep that before its shears is silent. So he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. They made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with the rich, although he had done no violence, and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. When you make his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offering and shall prolong his days. Through him the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish he shall see the light. He shall find satisfaction through his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous, and he shall bear the iniquities. Therefore I will allow him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil of the strong, because he poured out himself to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. Here ends the first reading. Our second reading comes from the book of Hebrews, the 10th chapter, starting at the 16th verse. 
In the death of Jesus, forgiveness of sins is accomplished and access to God is established. Hence, we gather together for worship, and when we love others, we experience a new benefit of Jesus' death. This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts, and I will write them on their minds. He also adds, I will remember their sins and their lawless deeds no more. Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer any offering for sin. Therefore, my friends, since we have confidence to enter the sanctuary by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us, through the curtain that is through his flesh, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us approach with a true heart and a full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from the evil conscience of our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope with a, without wavering, for he who has promised faithful. And let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds, not neglecting to meet together as in the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. Word of the Lord. As we continue our Good Friday service, we read the whole gospel account for John chapter 18 and 19. I will read this and offer points where I will extinguish the flames that are, with, that are on the altar as a way to enter towards the cross and have hope of Easter when we light again the church and sanctuary with all the decorations of the altar again. The Gospel of John, beginning at chapter 18, verse 1. So when Jesus went out to, with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to a place where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who was betrayed, also knew the place, because Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas brought a detachment of soldiers together with the police from the chief priests, and the Pharisees, and they came there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that was to happen to him, came forward and asked them, Whom are you looking for? They answered, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus replied, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. When Jesus said to them, I am he, they stepped back and fell to the ground. Again he asked them, whom are you looking for? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he, so if you are looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word that he had spoken. I did not lose a single one of them, of those whom you gave to me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it, struck the high priest slave, and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword back in its sheath. I am not to drink the cup that the Father has given me. So the soldiers, their officer, and the Jewish police arrested Jesus and bound him. First they took him to Annas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Caiaphas, who was the one who had advised the Jews that it would be better to have one person die for the people. Simon Peter, and another of the disciples followed Jesus. Since that disciple was known to the high priest, he went with Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest. But Peter was standing outside the, at the gate. So the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out, spoke to a woman who guarded the gate, and pe brought Peter in. The woman said to Peter, You are not also one of the man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the slaves and the police made a charcoal fire because it was cold, and they were standing around it and warming themselves. And Peter was also standing with them, warming himself. Then the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his teaching. Jesus answered, I have spoken openly to the world. 
I have always taught in the synagogues and in the temple, where all the Jews come together. I have said nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who heard what I said to them. They know what I said. When they had said this, one of the police standing nearby struck Jesus on the face, saying, Is that how you answer the high priest? Jesus answered, If I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then Annas sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing, warming himself. They asked him, You are not also one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, Did I not see you in the garden with him? And again Peter denied it, and at that moment the cock crowed. Then they took Jesus from Caiaphas to Pilate's headquarters. It was early in the morning. They themselves did not enter the headquarters so as to avoid ritual defilement and to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate went out to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered, If this man were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. The Jews replied, We are not permitted to put anyone to death. This was to fill that Jesus had said when he indicated the kind of death he was to die. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or do you tell others about me? So Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world, and if my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, you say that I am a king, for this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate asked him, What is truth? After he had said this, he went out to the Jews again and told them, I find no case against him, but you have a custom that I release someone for you at Passover. Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? They shouted in reply, not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a bandit. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. And the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they dressed him in purple robe. They kept coming up to him, saying, Hail the king of the Jews, and striking him on the face. Pilate went out again and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no case against him. So Jesus came out wearing a crown of thorns and a purple robe. Pilate said to them, Here is the man. When the chief priests and the police saw him, they shouted, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I may find no case against him. The uh, Jews answered him, We have a law, and according to that law, he ought to die because he has claimed to be the Son of God. Now when Pilate heard this, he was more afraid than ever. He entered his headquarters again and asked Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, Do you refuse to speak to me? Do you not know that I have power to release you and power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me unless it had been given you from above. Therefore the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to release him. But the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are no friend of the emperor. Everyone who claims to be a king sets himself against the emperor. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus outside and sat 
on the judge's bed to a place called a stone pavement, or in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now is the day of preparation for Passover, and it was about noon, and he said to the Jews, Here is your king. They cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate asked them, Shall I crucify your king? And the chief priest answered, We have no king but the emperor. And they handed him over to be crucified. So they took Jesus, and carrying a cross by himself, he went out to what was called the place of the skull, and in, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. And they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side with Jesus between them. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. The chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write King of the Jews, but this man said, I am King of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. And when the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier, and they took his tunic, now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it, to see who will get it. This was to fulfill what scripture says. They divided my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. And that is what the soldiers did. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus, where his mother and his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Clovis, and Mary Magdalene, when Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, In order to fulfill the scripture, I am thirsty. And a jar full of sour wine was standing there. So he put a sponge filled with wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus received the wine, he said, It is finished, and then bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Since it was the day of preparation, the Jews did not want the bodies left on the cross during the Sabbath, especially because the Sabbath was a day of great solemnity. So they asked Pilate to have the legs of the crucified men broken, and the bodies removed. Then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus, they saw he was already dead. They did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and all at once blood and water came out. He who saw this has testified so that you may also believe. His testimony is true, and he knows that he tells the truth. These things occurred so that the scripture might be fulfilled. None of his bones shall be broken. And again, another passage of scripture says, They will look on the one whom they have pierced. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was like a disciple of Jesus, thought, though a secret one because of his fear of the Jews, asked Pilate to lead him to let him take away the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him permission, so he came and removed his body. Nicodemus, who had first come to Jesus by night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about a hundred pounds. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it in the spices and linen cloths, according to the burial custom of the Jews. Now there was a garden in the pl place where he was crucified, and in the garden there was a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. And so because it was the Jewish day of preparation, and the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there.
we continue our service with the intercessory prayer. Let us pray. O oh God, our healer, show your compassion for the whole human family, that it is in turmoil and burden with illness and with fear. Hear our cry, O oh God. Oh God. Listen to our prayer. Come to our aid as the coronavirus spreads globally. Heal those who are sick and support and protect their families and friends from being inflicted. Hear our cry, O oh God. Listen to our prayer. Grant us your spirit of love and self-discipline so that we may come together working to control and eliminate the coronavirus. Hear our cry, O oh God. Listen to our prayer. Make us vigilant, attentive, and proactive in the eradication of all diseases, malaria, dengue, HIV, and AIDS, and others. That all diseases that create suffering and often result in death for many people, hear our cry, O God. Listen to our prayer. Heal our self-centeredness and indifference that makes us worry only when the virus threatens us. Open ways beyond timidity and fear to easily ignore our neighbor. Hear our cry, O oh God. Listen to our prayer. Strengthen and encourage those in public health services and in the medical profession, caregivers, nurses, attendants, doctors, and all who commit themselves to caring for the sick and their families. Hear our cry, O oh God. Listen to our prayer. Inspire give insight and hope to all researchers focused on developing a vaccine. Hear our cry, O oh God. Listen to our prayer. Sustain all workers and business owners who suffer loss of livelihood due to shutdowns, quarantines, closed borders, and other restrictions. Protect and guard all those who must travel. Hear our cry, O oh God. Listen to our prayer. Guide the leaders of the nations that they speak the truth, halt the spread of misinformation, and act with justice so that all your family may know healing. Hear our cry, O oh God. Listen to our prayer. Heal our world, heal our bodies, strengthen our hearts and our minds, and in the midst of turmoil, give us hope and peace. Hear our cry, O oh God. Listen to our prayer. Hold in your gentle embrace all who have died and all who will die this day. Comfort their loved ones and in this their despair. Hear our cry, O oh God. Listen to our prayer. Remember all your family, the entire human race, and all your creation in your love. Amen. Amen. And we end with saying together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father Amen. in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. By your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. Let us go out.